what's up people, Dobson was right here and welcome to another episode of Game Gems. The epi the show where we talk about games that are completely gems in our own collections. And remember people, this is my own personal opinion, so if you guys have your own opinion, please leave it in the comments down below. Do not be hateful like always. But today's episode, we are going deep, deep into the past of PlayStation with the PlayStation 1. Now, as you guys know, PlayStation... Sony were working with Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo wanted to go ahead and make themselves a console which was going to be a disc version console. Sony said yeah sure we'll do. Of course some things happened and a few things went wrong and Sony went and said silly Nintendo we'll do our own stuff. And then the PlayStation was born. Born in 1996 and 1997. Whew, it's a hell of a console. And not only that there was some absolute belting games on the PlayStation 1. So many, in fact, I can't even do one episode for it. we got to do numerous episodes throughout different seasons. Probably next series, season 2, next year, we'll probably do maybe three episodes of PlayStation 1, three episodes of PS2, and probably three episodes of PS4, and maybe another episode for PS5. We don't know. It depends on how big the collection goes. But today's episode, I've got myself five great PlayStation 1 titles here that I would recommend you guys to go ahead and try them out yourself and put them in your gem collections, if you guys have your own personal opinions like myself. So, let's get this down right away. First one is one that started it all from my own childhood. You guys know how much I love Yu-Gi-Oh! I love it to death. And so is this game that I love as well. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. This game is known for everything. Now, if you guys don't have a clue how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! You don't even need to learn Yu-Gi-Oh! to play this game because it's a complete different game altogether. This game came out before the card game. This, so this game came out around about the anime series in Japan and of course a little bit in the United Kingdom before the card game first came out. So the rules are completely different. So with this one it's all about fusing random things to make bigger monsters and then go ahead and win. It's like an arcade game pretty much. And god I wish this did come out in the arcades. I've been, I've been putting so many pound coins in it, it'd be ridiculous. You get yourself a normal standard deck, it could be a random deck for anything you can get from, from a dragon deck, to a thunder deck, to a zombie deck, to a magician deck, anything could be anything. Depends on how you type in your name beginning of the game. The story is quite simple, you're the pharaoh, you want to be king of the games and all that lot, and then of course a villain turns up and he's trying to get collect all the millennium pieces. However, you go ahead and destroy your Millennium item, and then you get lost in the other world. You go ahead and play the original Yugi Moto, bracket bracket, and collect the Millennium items from that world, taking you back to the new, to the old world, where you go ahead and face your foes head on in a card game. Now, it can be difficult. Don't get me wrong with that. It is a very tough game, okay, people. The amount of times I have had game overs for this is numerous times. And I've now played it for so many years, I know exactly how to, how to beat the game. All I say is, you need one monster, or one monster only. Twin-headed Thunder Dragon, that's all you need. If you get that card, you've beaten the game. It's That's all you need for that game to actually beat the game, because nothing else can beat it unless somebody draws out Blue-Eyes Ultimate Dragon, or Gay Guardian, or... Um, Black Meteor Dragon, but I'm sure you can get them anyhow in the game. That is why I love Forbidden Memories. It's fantastic, you don't need to learn New Year to play it, it's a hell of a great time. Moving on from a great anime, let's move on to a great Disney film. My childhood favourite Disney film, Hercules! Now, I could tell you many many stories of this. My mother can't even look at this game anymore because all it will remind her in her head is the tune Hercules! She can't even look at it anymore. When I'm playing it, she'll walk away. She's like, I can't watch this anymore. It's too much. Too much great memories, but too many to be glued in your head to give you a bad headache. It's a fantastic platformer. 
slash action. It's all in the film. Now, there is other games like this, because this is called Action Game featuring Hercules. All I call it is Hercules the Game from Disney. It's just how it is played from the film. It's got all the scenes from the film. You meet Philatides, you go ahead and face the Hydra, you face Medusa, you face Hades, you do everything that you did in the film, just in the game. And to tell you truthfully, it is freaking hard, okay? Right from the very beginning, it's easy, very straightforward. It's when you get to freaking Olympus where it gets absolutely diabolically difficult. Now, I'm not saying that, saying, oh, I've never beaten it. I have beaten it numerous times. But losing so many lives and getting numerous game overs on that little area is ridiculous. And it's not even the final part of the area. You got yourself the freaking underworld after that, and that's even harder. But still, though, I love it. You guys should love it if you love Disney, and you will love it because if you like Hercules. Because he is a hero, not a zero goes into the gem collection. Next up, we're paying homage to a great, great comedian, Rick Mail. Hogs of War. Hogs of War is pretty much a British, English, World War II slash World War I pig version of Worms. That's all it is. If you like Worms, you're gonna like this. You play as pigs, you get yourself the main uh, marshal or the commander, whatever you want to call him, who's the main actor, who is Rick Mail, the great comedian. Sadly, he's no longer with us anymore. He was a freaking amazing actor, an amazing comedian, etc, etc. He was one of the voices of Bottom, which was a British TV show. This game was ace. If you guys don't have a clue what I mean, as you guys can see some gameplay right now, this game is extremely rare. Um, it's not highly rare, like it's worth hundreds of pounds. It's worth around about like 30 to 40 pounds if you see it in a good condition. If you see it in very, very immaculate condition, meaning manual, the cover, and a very, very good disc, you can see it running around about 50 to 60 pounds if you're unfortunate. If you find it very, very cheap, I would recommend getting it right away because it's a hell of a fun game and you can play it more than one player. It's a two player game as well if you want to do it as a co op game as well. But with it, it's comedy as well. It's a lot of comedy fun and a lot of it's all related to pig jokes. So you've got some pork chop, freaking roast pork, pork scratchings, etc. etc. Some of you guys in America won't have a clue what pork scratchings are, but. Let's just say it's pork belly, deep fried to death. That's all I'm saying. Hogs of War goes straight into the collection. Now, this one. Now, I've promised myself that I should not put anything that I am absolutely connected to them very much. So, like I said, no, re no Final Fantasies rarely, no Kingdom Hearts, no Resident Evil, no Yakuza, no Personas, unless I absolutely have to and put a name out for it. But I didn't say it was Silent Hill though, did I? <laughs> Silent Hill 1. What a rare game this is now. Now, it's not it's not rare. I mean, I, there's not a lot of copies out there. It's very common. But seeing it out in the wild is a completely different statement. It's rare, okay? It's very rare indeed. And... It's that rare, it's freaking expensive, and it's getting more expensive because, as you guys know, about the remake of Silent Hill 2 coming out by next year, I think, this is going to go up even higher. Even higher, because we know that if Silent Hill 2 remake ex succeeds, we're going to get this next as a remake. Hands down, we're going to. And to be honest, people, it's a fantastic horror game. It's fan-freaking-tastic. It's not as good as number one. I mean, it's not as good as number two, and it's definitely not as good as Shattered Memories. But holy shit, people, this was the compete the this was the one that was facing Resident Evil. So you had Capcom versus Konami. Which one did you want? Did you want Resident Evil or did you want Silent Hill? For me, I was a Resident Evil fan, but I do love Silent Hill as well. I love them both equally because this one is more of. Um, of an anticipation horror. Resident Evil is more of jump scare horror. It's complete different types of horror altogether. This one you can't see what's in front of you because of the mist. 
Resident Evil, you don't know what's going to happen unless something pops out through the glass window or something coming through a car or something is right behind you and grabs you. We don't know what could happen. That is why I always say I cannot decide between either Silent Hill or Resident Evil because they're both different horror genres. You've got jump scare horror, you got yourself anticipation horror. Complete different um, sides of the scale. But this game though, very good, fantastic camera work. To be honest, it's better camera, camera work than Resident Evil because for Resident Evil it was fixed cameras. Did not like that as much. With this one, the camera followed you, which I was happy with. The controls can be a little bit stiff, don't get me wrong about that because it's old school PlayStation 1 um, controls. The characters are memorable, How do you feel? Pyramid Head was fucking scary. You had yourself a lot of other creatures in this game that were very, very memorable. And again, though, the freaking mapping of the game as well. The puzzles as well. Flipping it, the puzzles were tough. But by far, though, it is a great game. It's definitely worth the money. If you guys do see this for about 50 quid, get it right away. Because mainly this game sells for about 90 to 100 pound easily. So I would recommend you guys to go ahead and pick yourself up, whether it's the black label of Silent Hill 1 or the like platinum version, which is the silver label. Silver label one is a lot more cheaper, but if you can buy it in CEX, you want to get yourself the black label. It's better. And that leaves us with one more game on the PlayStation. And that is... The most rarest and the most expensive PlayStation 1 game I have in my collection. And I'm that much of a fan of it, I bought two versions of it. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Now this one right here is the Japanese version, which is the best of, which is really, really good. I play this one more than this one because I want to keep this one in mint condition. This one I have in my hand right here is the limited edition version. You want to know how much this game costs now? Over £500 this game is costing now, people. This game is worth over 500 quid Because it has the soundtrack and a few cards in it and everything. Everything's all in it. Now, of course, you may be thinking, did I really pay for that? No. I bought this at a game convention for 120 quid. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, what a hell of a profit that was. But yeah, by far of it all though, Castlevania Symphony Night, to be honest, in my opinion, is the best Castlevania. People will call it Metroidvania, okay? It has the same layout as Metroid. You gotta go to Pacific areas, face a boss, get an item, go to the next area, do some story, fight a boss, get the item, move on to the next area. It's exactly the same thing. But with this one, it has RPG elements. You level up by b defeating that different type of monsters, including bosses. You get special items that can turn you into a bat, a mist, or wolf. You face legendary enemies from the Castlevania series, like the giant bat, Medusa, Death, Dracula, of course. You get yourself some of the characters as well that are from the anime series. Now, just to let you guys know that a part of Symphony of the Night is possibly going to be a part of the next series of Castlevania with uh, Rick to Belmar. I cannot wait for it, people. I really cannot. But either way, this game is perfection. That is why this game is worth so much money. This is why it's such a rare game. This is why people want it in their collection. Yes, people want it in their collection because of how expensive this game is, but the gameplay the music, the graphics, the freaking controls, the battles, the bosses, the characters, everything about it under the sun. It is pure perfection. End of story. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, oh, it's not the best Castlevania. They prefer Super Castlevania 4. I'm saying that because the Angry Video Game Nerd prefers the SNES version instead of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I can slightly agree and slightly disagree. But my eyes, this is the best one. The one that everybody loves. The one that so many speedrunners have tried to perfect this game to be the world record holders. I've tried doing it, I've not got no chance. Have I beaten it though? Once. Only once. I have never got that privilege to win it one more time. 
Um, I still remember that very day, 2019, before COVID, put up my PlayStation 1, got a save status on it, went ahead and started playing it, it took me at least half a year to beat. <laughs> I'm not joking, half a year for me to beat this game because I kept on getting stuck. Thankfully, I have a few strategy guides here and there. I've got the intent to tell me where I needed to go. I have some people telling me on where I should be going. I love you all, I've beaten it. But by God, it was such a hell of a ride. And I loved it to very death. I'd love to do it again. And thankfully, you got New Game Plus on it as well. So I can play as Richter Bellman if I wanted to. But I'm going to leave that another time for myself. But that is the PlayStation 1 gems of the collection of this moment in time. I there my there's my choices for the first five for the PlayStation 1. You got Silent Hill, Hogs of War, Hercules, Yu-Gi-Oh, Forbidden Memories, and Castlevania and Symphony of the Night. If you guys disagree with my choices, please leave it in the comments down below. Like I said, this is my opinion. You guys have your own, so please let me know what your opinions are of your PlayStation 1 um, choices. And if you do agree, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe as well if you like my content. I do different content as always. You guys know me. I'm Dobbs Rules, also known as the Back of Me Tie Guy. With that being said, the people at Slugo see you guys subscribing. And I'll see you guys for another episode of Game Gems. Cheerio!